What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Tammy talks here. Too much. I hope Carrie. I hope this works out for Carrie. I do because I feel like Carrie is jumping off the edge. Okay, let's talk, y'all. And just like that, this is episode nine. Starts off with Aiden and Carrie in Che's apartment. So, um, Aiden is just coming back in town. He lets her know that his sons all said hi. Carrie was like, even a little one, Wyatt. Wyatt's not going for her. He don't see her for her. Um, Aiden decides to call Wyatt to let Wyatt know that he then made it safely. I guess he has like a thing with planes. So he calls him, turns it around, lets Carrie see him. He was like, turn it around, <laughs> turn it back around. Wyatt don't like Carrie. It's understandable. His parents are divorced. He's probably one of those kids that is just taking it extremely extremely hard um that's just what it is so don't take it personal Carrie he has met you once he has known you for a week it's not that deep Aiden also lets Carrie know that he has been talking to the people in the building talking to the dorm and talking to all these other people and Carrie freaks out because you know for one, most buildings don't want you to sublease, right? That's not what they do. Most buildings don't want you to, probably all buildings don't want you to Airbnb either. That disrupts the tenants, the other tenants. Um, people like to know who their neighbors are. I know who this neighbor is. I know who that neighbor is. I know who the people next to her are. I know who, who the people down at the end of the hall are. I have seen these people. So when you start to see different faces in the building, different faces in the hallway, different faces in your hallway, it will give you a little bit of pause. So that's understandable. So while they're in the kitchen, um, there's a knock at the door, a very firm knock. Not quite a police knock, but a knock that's like authoritative. It's building management. They slide the note under the door. Litin apartment, what is it, 18F? No, your, um, your guests have overstayed the 30-day time limit that they have, which typically means you need to pay extra or whatever the case. I guess what I don't understand is why Carrie didn't just buy the apartment. You know what I mean? I don't understand why Carrie didn't just buy the apartment from Che and then just like move in there. Oh, but I guess you can't because she's renting. It's it. I feel like Carrie and Aiden are doing too much. So Carrie lets um tells Aiden, you know, we can always go back to my apartment. He is still very much a never sitting foot in there, and I'm sorry, but that shit is really that is bothering me. That is bothering me, like. He's acting like he got robbed in there or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it like a traumatic whatever, I, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. I think it's weird that he just refuses to even set foot into that apartment. I don't know. It comes across a little bit controlling if you ask me, but whatever. So we get in um, the next scene is Ryan from, what's the show called? Million Dollar Listing? So Ryan is there. Y'all know he is a big real estate agent in New York. He is helping Seema. Seema is still working with this like very arrogant director who is just looking for an apartment to live in while he um, shoots a movie in New York. So he's on the phone the entire time. Ryan leaves and he's going to go down to another unit real quick. And Seema is like, what is your problem? Like I have shown you all these amazing apartments. He's like, is this the very best? And she's like, no, the very best was like five apartments ago, but you haven't been paying attention to that either. Come to find out he likes her. I said, this is childish. So he tells her, yes, but if I would have picked that apartment, I wouldn't be able to like see you. Um, She's like, what? What's going on? They end up sleeping together in the rental unit. As they're finishing up, um, Ryan comes back and he's calling out for Seema. Seema's like, he'll take the apartment. And Ryan's like, we do whatever it takes to close the deal. If y'all have not seen Million Dollar Listing, the New York one, he used, like, he kicks ass and when it comes to real estate. Like, he is, like, he is that man out there. So we get to Miranda. Let me get 
in my mouth. So we get to Miranda. So Miranda is walking with Brady and talking about um, what he's going to do for the summer. You know, he's working at Scout. She makes a joke that what do you do on the double shift? You know, just cook fries the whole time. He's like, I do more than make fries. So, you know, he... Miranda wants her son to go to college, right? If he's not going to go to college, she wants him to do something, as all parents. I think everybody understands that college is not for everybody. I am of the firm belief that you should at least give it a try unless you know for sure that you want to go into, like, a trade. Neither one of my parents um, went to a four-year college. My dad has his associates. But neither one of my parents went to a four-year college. We still grew up upper middle class, right? But what they instilled in me and my brother is wanting us to go to college. So it's not, or or if college was not going to work out for us, that we got, you know, a meaningful job. We didn't just, you know, go and try to make ends meet here and there. So what I think Miranda should do is take a step back from the college approach and see if there's anything else Brady is interested in. If Brady wants to someday take over Scout from Steve, which, you know, could be a very good career path, then, hey, let's put you, let's, would you be interested in, in like a tech school or like a community college to take some business classes or something like that? See if he would want to do like the advertising or the social media. Miranda has to like pivot her way of doing it. But Brady is also disrespectful. So she brings up this summer program in Costa Rica. She's talking about all the benefits of it. And he's like, well, why don't you go do it? Let me help you with your application. What? There's no way. There is absolutely no way. <laughs> Who Miranda just, and I feel like Miranda has so much guilt for this divorce that she is just letting Brady walk all over her. Check him in. That is still your child at the end of the day. He's not a kid, but that is still your child. The levels of disrespect were appalling. So Miranda gets this idea to have Charlotte have Lily hang out with Brady to encourage him to go to college. Charlotte's talking to Lily about it. Lily is like, he's two years older than me. That's weird. But ultimately, she agrees to do it. So, Herbert comes home, catches Lisa asleep in her office. Lisa's tired, right? Lisa seems overly fatigued. She's burning the candle on both ends. I hate that saying, for to be honest. But she's burning the candle at both ends. He's supportive of her work, but he's also very passive aggressive about it. And what I like, Herbert, that's what bothers me. I wish we would see more of, of their family dynamic. I really feel like Lisa needs to be incorporated more in the group scenes over Seema. Um, because I feel like Lisa's, I feel like Lisa's storyline is more entertaining and interesting than Seamus is. Because Seamus' whole storyline is she just wants to find love. Whereas Lisa is juggling a career, motherhood, you know, being a wife. I feel like Lisa has a more interesting storyline. So he's just very passive aggressive and it annoys me because he always likes to throw in, when well, you get stuff done for your job, what about what I need? And it's like, don't do that, Herbert. Don't do that. Don't do that. Naya is getting her back blown out while Miranda is listening in the next room. Naya found this guy on Tinder, found out that they can just sit and have sex. Nothing more has to come from it. When they're done, you know, they can get on their, their phone to look at Instagram, all this other type of stuff. So she likes it. She is cool with it. We see Che. Why is Che still here? <laughs> and y'all know I don't I don't mind Che per se, but why is Che still here? Like work help me. Y'all help me. Why is Che still here? So we get um Che. Che is at work and a girl comes in, or were they non-binary? A person comes in and they have um, a box of kittens. And Che is like, ah, we don't take in animals here. You got to go up the street. 
the person was like, oh my God, you look like that comedian Che Diaz. Che was like, nope, not her or not them. And they get into this little back and forth banter. Che admits that it's, it is me, but you know, got to have a steady paycheck, paycheck coming in, which I feel like is standard for like people living in New York and LA. You're trying to break into the industry. You still, a lot of them still work like part-time jobs so that they can, you know, sustain themselves. So Che lies to this person and tells them that they have all these comedy gigs coming up. And I'm like, oh, since when? <sighs> che is pointless. I'm sorry, but Che has now become a pointless character, a pointless one. We go back to Carrie. Carrie comes home and Che done kept the kittens and there's a kitten in her apartment. I thought Carrie was going to like freak out, but she really didn't. Um, but it's, look, Carrie doesn't want to get attached to a pet, which is understandable. So, Che is, um, Carrie's letting Che know that they got a letter from the building management. Che was like, don't even trip. I was going to kick y'all out anyways, because now I can almost sort of somewhat kind of maybe afford my apartment. So, we're good now. So, Carrie lets her know that Aiden is up the street and Che is like, what? happened in here that he won't even come in here anymore and I mean I watched the series I've seen both movies so I understand the Carrie Aiden debacle I guess is the best word I can think of right now like I get it but I still think that Aiden is really putting 20 on 10 I do I just feel like he's doing too too much to the point where he's not even willing to, like, step inside the apartment. I mean, I get it, but I don't. So, we get uh, Giuseppe. I, the Giuseppe-Anthony thing, uh, I, uh, Giuseppe and um, Anthony are walking home. Giuseppe wants to come up. He really likes Anthony. Anthony won't let him up, whatever. So, Seema and her clients... What's his name? Ravi. Seema and her client, they meet Carrie and Aiden for dinner. Aiden recognize him and it's like fanboying out. Um, Carrie is like, is this serious? Seema is like, no, no, he's not husband material. Jump the gun from <laughs> boyfriend dating whatever straight to husband. But ultimately this scene, it leads us to the conversation of Carrie wanting to sell her apartment and buy another apartment somewhere else. Y'all know in New York, they buy apartments, not houses, for the most part. So, Seema is like, I know a great place. Nope, it's too big for you. And Carrie's like, I can use more space. I got a lot of clothes and stuff. So, I could use more space. So, Carrie ends up showing Miranda and Charlotte this four-bedroom place that she's looking at. And as soon as she said, I get a key to the park, I said she must be in, is it Gramercy? Is that how you pronounce it? I knew she was there because I watched Million Dollar Wisdom. So I knew that she must have been there. It's this four bedroom, three bathroom place that was super, super big. Um, do I think it's too big for Carrie at her age? Meaning she's not going to be having any more, having any children or anything? Kind of. But Carrie is thinking about... Aiden's kids and having space and room for them lets them know that she is willing to, that she wants to sell her apartment and they were like really I'm surprised that Carrie is not going to keep her apartment and sublease it because that's what I think that's what I would think she would do so that if this doesn't work out with Aiden that, you know what I'm saying? Because Aiden's going to still live in Virginia. So I just, I don't know. I, I just, I'm kind of shocked that Carrie's not willing to just rent her current apartment out. So while she's there talking, she's saying how things are going great with, you know, she met up with Aiden's ex-wife down there. And like, she feels like, you know, things are progressing quickly, but very well between the two of them. So she gets a phone call from Aiden's wife that wants to meet for coffee. And Carrie is like, no, it's going to be fine. I'm like, it should be fine because it's not like you're like, it's not as if Carrie is like coming in and breaking up their marriage or anything like that. It's been years. It shouldn't be a big deal. 
So Miranda is getting dressed because she is getting ready to go somewhere. Naya is in there having the sex again. Here's my thing with this. Why do you have a bat? Why do you have a place that only has one bathroom that's in your bedroom? That is a very weird setup to me. Miranda, why would you agree to move into a place that only has one bathroom that is inside the master bedroom? So you have to knock on the door every time you need to go in there. I just, okay. Um, so she ends up going back to her house that she, her house in Brooklyn, her old house in Brooklyn. And as she's going up so she can go get showered and get dressed, she sees Lily coming out of, um, Bra Brody, Brady, Lord. Now I can't think of this child's name. Hold on y'all. I don't want y'all yelling at me in the <laughs> Brady. Brody is the little Kardashian's brother or the Jenner. Okay. So she sees Lily coming out of Brady's room with just a t-shirt on. I said, oh, not y'all in there having the sex. <laughs> y'all wanted them to spend some time together. So Miranda freaks out, calls Charlotte. Charlotte is like, yeah, I knew she slept over. They were had, had so much to talk about. So she probably just slept on the couch. Miranda said, nah, she wasn't on the couch. That couch didn't look slept on. She came out of his room with a complete guilt look on her face. So they end up meeting up for lunch and Charlotte is like, <laughs> Brady isn't even her type. And Miranda was like, what is that supposed to be? Miranda was so offended. It, it means that Lily goes after boys that want to go to college and that have a very clear future and plan for their life. That's what it means, Miranda. You know what that meant. So later, Miranda, um, Charlotte is talking to Harry and she's talking about how, you know, what's going to happen between the two of them. What if Lily likes Miranda more? What if Miranda's like a mother-in-law from hell? What if it, like, it just turned into a whole thing? And now care, um, Charlotte done planned they wedding. I said, look at this, Charlotte. <laughs> but Charlotte is going to Charlotte, y'all. We then see Naya and um, Nia and, oh boy, the Tinder date in bed they're scrolling through instagram or whatever and she comes across her ex posing with that same artist that he told her he hasn't cheated on her with yet that still that will haunt me don't tell me you ain't cheated on me yet that means that you planning on doing it lord um so now she feels away she done kicked the tinder date out she was rude to the tinder date now she's up in her feelings so Miranda and Charlotte spent, um, are at this party. I guess the party was the party for Herbert to talk to like his constituents. Is that what that was for? But it's at Charlotte and Harry's house. Miranda and Charlotte spend the entire party like wondering what Brady and Lily are going to do, trying to read their body language every time the two of them are not in, you know, the midst of this party that they probably wouldn't want to be at anyways. Um... They're freaking out. I was just kind of over it because eh. Lisa's late to the party. Okay. So Herbert is calling her. She is knocked out holding a shoe. My first inclination is, is she sick? Because the way that she is like sleep, sleep. <laughs> um, granted, she's working a lot, but I don't think she's working that much that she would just be, you know, laid out the way that she is so we find out that anthony doesn't really want to rock with giuseppe like that because he thinks that he's using him for a green card giuseppe was saying no nah, i i have dual citizenship my mom is was is from brooklyn so lisa shows up to the party herbert is being super passive aggressive to her calling her passive aggressive saying that she's never too tired to do her stuff but his stuff always falls onto the back burner. And she lets him know, I'm not being passive aggressive. I'm pregnant. Okay. Damn. I want to tell you a different way. <laughs> Cause that'd have been me. I'm pregnant, nigga. Damn. I want to tell you in a different way, but you know, you took, you know, you coming at me away. So he's like so speechless that he doesn't even know what to say or how to start off his speech. 
Carrie meets up with Kathy. So Kathy is telling her, I read your new book. I loved it. But what I've noticed is that you have no problem talking about your life and the people in your life, which is great, but I don't want you to write about my sons. I want to maintain their privacy. Now, I don't know if you're even thinking about talking about my sons or have you thought that far in advance, but I just don't want you to. I hope I'm not offending you. Carrie said no. No offense whatsoever. I respect that. I will not write about your sons, you know, in my book. Carrie then goes on, um, excuse me, Kathy. Oh, Carrie tells her that she's moving into um, a bigger apartment. She has been thinking about her sons and that, you know, if Aiden's up here, if they ever want to come, there's space for them. There's room for them. You know, they won't be laying on, you know, on the couch or anything like that. So Kathy is like, I know your history with Aiden and just don't hurt him. And what gets me about Carrie is Carrie gets so, like, uh, offended, indignant when people bring that up. I, I know about her past as well. No, Carrie, you did it, though. You did it, though. So if somebody that is in Aiden's life wants to talk to you about that because now y'all are getting back together, who are you to get upset about that? Who are you to, like, you know what I mean? Like, I hate that Carrie does that. Take it in stride. Don't wear so much of it on your face. Because Kathy is like, it's not just Aiden. It's now Aiden and my boys. And Carrie, you know, this this shame all over her face. It's like, I get it. The final scene is Carrie taking Aiden to see the new place. And Aiden is like, wow, this is huge. Um... Tells her not to get rid of his old place for her. I mean, let's get rid of her old place for him. But, but Aiden, you won't go there. You won't go there. So where you could come in and y'all don't have to spend any money on lodging and accommodations every other week or however much, however often you come up, um, you won't go to her place. So... Him saying, don't get rid of your place for me, Carrie, I would be a little on guard with that. I would. I would be on guard with that. I, I that would, that would give me definite pause. So Carrie gets back to her old apartment and she sees that one girl, is her name Lisette, that makes the jewelry. And Lisette is telling her that the guys that she is subleasing from in that, that brownstone, that apartment, they are moving back to New York and now she has to leave. And she's like, who would ever want to leave from this building? And Carrie is like, I can imagine someone. And she calls Seema, tells Seema she wants the apartment. That was it. I, I would have a little pause with trying to move though. Just because of the way that Aiden was like, don't move just for me when he won't go to the place you're living in. Was that weird to anybody else? So that was the episode, y'all. Let me know what you guys thought about it. If you have not already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.